Great. Thank you. Hi, my name's Rocky. I put a lot of slides on here. I'll try to make it through all of them, but I gave myself a timer not to waste your time. Um, these are just some thoughts that I came across through my career that kind of changed the way I think about things, and I thought I'd share a few of them. Maybe you have the same ones. Maybe uh, you'll think about some things differently. Kind of how it works in my brain. I have a little thought, or somebody shares a little thought, like yesterday with the pairing. Um, keep that, and then it's kind of a paradigm shift going forward the way I think about some things. Uh, so first one I want to talk about is thinking about solutions and thinking about what the solution is versus how you implement the solution. Um, I found that um, the what part, what the solution is, is portable information. You can learn how to solve a problem in one language, get to another language, and then you can just, oh, how do I solve this problem? I know, I'll Google the syntax or something. So this works, and I find that you can apply this to pretty much any problem that you come across, not just related to software. It helps me out a lot. And I have some examples of this. One where that comes up for me a lot is the agile context. Um, uh, there's a tendency sometimes for people to jump right into how do we solve this problem. That's the fun part right, for developers. Um, but they skip thinking about what the solution is uh, and communicating about this. And so it kind of wastes a lot of time. And also, it kind of limits them from exploring solutions. So we end up with user stories sometimes that look like the one on the left, too much detail, don't need all of this. Um, the better one for me is the one on the right. Just tell me what you want, I'll figure it out. Right. This is uh, helpful. Um, also, I, I see this a lot, so I mentioned it, uh, but there are many, many, many more examples. Um, but we have something like this, where we have a couple of variables in a SAS partial or something. Uh, one of them is the how, that's the color blue. The other one is the what, the button background. Right, and so you don't want to take your implementation specific variables and spread them around through your app. That's hard to change. Um, you want to use the variable that's more of the what it is. And this applies to functions, methods, variables in your JavaScript and other code bases. Uh, the next thing, uh, this is from, came, came to me from a, a very experienced product person. Um, he described finding the best place to start um, this is not to say to do waterfall, but just to take all the information you have and find the best place to start your solution. Don't start from a guess. Um, and this helps you later on. You can't build much um, easily on top of a guess. It's good to start with the best you know. It works for your code, too. Um, and it segues into this. This is kind of something that came from Sandy Metz to me, um, is to write your code in a way that makes your app easy to change. She's talking about solid principles here, but I think if you're also working in a functional language or if you're writing your functional JavaScript, the same stuff applies. Um, thinking about this while you're writing the code and solving the problems helps to uh, enforce the good design patterns that you've all learned about. Um, and then the last two quick ones are about kind of building trust and safety between you and other people um, on your teams or in your department, or whatever. Um, this one, it's just a simple process for me, um, because I can't, I can't know what someone else is thinking, what someone else is experiencing, ever. I need to ask, confirm with them, then move on, and keep this process going and, and going and going forever. And I can't, if you have an assumption, that's OK, but validate it. Never, never act on it. Always confirm, and I find this to be super helpful. Um, and then also, the last one, try to be a teacher whenever you can. If you are the more experienced or you know something that you want to share, um, teach why not to do something. Uh, this um, came up earlier. Melanie mentioned something about PR comments that weren't helpful. Um, don't just say no. Right? If, you, if you see something that you think, this should be better, this should change, um, explain. It's OK to, to tell somebody, we don't want to do your solution. Um, the best thing, though, is to go with them and teach them the right thing to do. Don't leave a vague comment, like, maybe we shouldn't do this. That's not helpful. We shouldn't do this because these bad things can happen. Explain to it. Do this instead because these good things, and this is helpful. And then, just last little point, qualify any comments that aren't critical for your team members to, to make changes. Um, let them know. Let them make the decision, and then just let it go. Right? Like maybe the style is different than your style, or the, the little way they solve the problem, and it's not a big deal. Just 
let them decide whether they want to change their code and teach the best thing. All right, and that's it. Thank you. <laughs>